I'm Hillary Hendershot, your host, and this is The Retirement Years on Profit Boss Radio, episode 146. The Retirement Years on Profit Boss Radio is your weekly wealth building and retirement mastermind. Profit Boss is also a movement for women who want to reach their full wealth potential and be financially free. Let me be your guide as you defy the odds, take control of your money, grow your wealth, and retire well. Do you want the secrets of wealth and retirement to be yours? This is the place. I'm Hillary Hendershot. I'm a certified financial planner running a leading advisory firm for women and couples, and I'm sharing with you real stories from real life and real people who are making it happen. Forget Wall Street. You ready? Let's do this. Welcome to How to Protect Your Financial Identity and Online Data and Cybersecurity Part 2. Profit Boss, I got really clear during my conversation with Adam Levin, whose interview aired last week in episode 145 of Profit Boss Radio, that my interview with him was actually not going to be sufficient to cover the topic for you. So the purpose of today's episode is to give you very action-oriented tips to prevent identity theft from happening to you. I also went the extra mile and created a beautiful PDF downloadable cybersecurity guide that you can get for yourself at hillaryhendershot.com forward slash 146. So you can go there after you listen to today's episode and just go right down the list, go right down that checklist as you continue to maximize and bulletproof the protection of your online data. Identity theft is increasing. According to Javelin Strategy and Research, the odds of getting scammed after a data breach in 2010 were one in nine. And in 2014, Javelin found that the odds had increased to one in three. I can only imagine they've increased since 2014. Also, according to Science Magazine, the more time you spend on social media, the greater your vulnerability to hacking. Every picture you post, every quiz question you answer, please tell me you don't forward those quizzes to your friends, please. It's just a massive data grab, okay? Just stop with the quizzes. Every experience you recount, every shred of personal information you willingly share with friends and contacts increases what Levin calls your quote unquote, attackable surface. So you're obviously not going to stop enjoying the benefits of being on social media. If you You're on there sharing with friends and family. It's a great way to connect and stay connected and know what's happening in people's lives. So we need to follow best practices to protect your identity and financial security. Okay, so you need to make monitoring your identity a seamless part of your routine. Remember from last week, Adam's 3M framework for identity theft protection, which he shared with us, is first M, minimize your exposure. Second, monitor your accounts. And three, manage the damage. If you do become a victim, you've got to manage the damage, right? So let's start from the top. I'm going to start with the two most important things, passwords and personal monitoring of your accounts. Let's start with passwords. You simply must use a password vault like 1Password or LastPass and use complex passwords on any and all web portals or applications that contain any kind of communications or financial information. Complex passwords consist of at least six characters, Sometimes I use 15 characters or more that are a combination of letters, numbers, and symbols like the at, the pound, the dollar sign, the exclamation point, etc. if allowed. Occasionally, you should use capital letters also. You got to use distinct, different passwords for all of your mobile devices, laptops, applications, and websites. With one password or last pass, you only have to remember one password to gain access to your entire library of passwords. So it's still the password to get into LastPass or 1Password and your device, right? So you have password level security at the device level, and then you have another distinct password on your password vault. Many years ago, an IT guy I had used this example. He said, plenty of room at the Hotel California. So then you write that out, plenty of room at the Hotel California, and maybe that's your favorite favorite lyrics from your favorite Eagle song. And so it's P O. R A T 
H C. Plenty of room at the Hotel California. Now nobody's gonna guess P O R A T H C, but now you have a way to remember it. So that's how I was taught. And then you can add your favorite number, maybe that's 14, and then an exclamation point, okay? You can also use the at symbol instead of the A. These are just examples, but you want something you can remember, but that no one's ever going to guess. It has to be something that's not relevant to you. Uh, no one's going to go through your files and folders or or know what your nickname for your, your kitty cat is and guess your password, okay? Okay. Uh, for banking pins, do not use simple pins like 1234 or 9876 or your kid's birthday again. Uh, okay, pro tip, change your email and banking passwords once a month or once a quarter, at least change them on the regular basis. Second, most important thing you've got to start doing is you must view your financial transactions frequently. I recommend daily, and this means bank accounts, credit cards, and brokerage accounts. This is the most effective and proactive way to catch any fraud that has occurred in your accounts. Nearly all of us will have transaction fraud in our accounts at some point in our lives. I've had it probably four or five times. So you really need to be out in front of what's happening in your accounts in order to catch and report it on a timely basis. I recommend setting up a system of alerts where your banks and credit cards notify you anytime there's a transaction above a certain dollar amount. Mine are set for $250. Your might be, yours might be higher or lower than that, depending on your spending habits. The point is to try to catch transactions that are erroneous as they increase in size. So typically uh, what criminals will do, they'll make a dollar charge, then a $6 charge, then a $250 charge. And now we're off to the races. If that account information is still valid, they're going to start trying much larger charges. I one time had someone run my credit card for $2,000 gift cards at the Apple store. And that was the first charge. They hadn't charged anything else. And so, you know, I mean, I, I did get my money back, but they went right in at $2,000. Now, what kind of silly person who was working at the Apple store let them use my credit card? I'll never really know because they don't let you be the FBI investigator who goes down to the store, right? They sort of separate you from that part of the the follow-up. But anyway, I have often thought about what was that person thinking? You can also tell your bank to send you either emails or text messages when that transaction size is exceeded. Again, you're going to get a lot of emails and text messages in regards to transactions that you yourself incurred. That's fine. It's not a problem. Just click delete. It's not like a big deal, right? Don't have it stop your day or in interrupt your productivity. It's just a way of staying present to what's happening in your bank accounts. Okay, so those are the first, the two most important things. Now, let's talk about the physical mail. Okay, first, never ever throw financial documents in the trash. Instead, invest in a shredder. I linked to a couple possible shredders that you could use in the PDF download that you're going to get at hillaryhendershot.com forward slash 146. And then uh, I actually split shredded information. So I put like one handful in one trash can, the other handful in another trash can. If you won't be home for a few days or a few weeks, you can put a vacation hold on your mail so financial documents aren't sitting in your uh, post box on your porch. Consider opting out of pre-screened offers of credit and insurance by mail. You can opt out either for five years or permanently. To opt out, call 888-567-8688. Obviously that phone number is in the download, so you don't need to stop what you're doing and write it down. You can get it, or you can go to optoutprescreen.com. The three nationwide credit reporting companies operate the phone number and website. So if you opt out, you might miss out on some offers of credit. So how I've resolved that for myself is it's actually pretty easy to do your research and figure out which rewards credit cards are going to be the best for you. So I just make that an outbound activity instead of an inbound activity. I'm okay with not getting credit card offers. More general tips. Destroy the labels on prescription medicine before you throw it out. Don't share your health plan information with people. Before you share information at your work or a retailer or a child's school or a doctor's office, ask why they need it and how they'll safeguard it. Better yet, just simply push back and to decline to give things like your mother's maiden name and your date of birth and your social security number. Make sure you know who's asking for personal or financial information. Never, ever, ever give out personal information to someone who called, texted, or emailed you. 
if a company that claims you have an account with them asks for personal information, don't click on the links in the email. Instead, visit the company's website and contact them through customer service. Be sure to confirm whether they really did send out the request. Contact your insurance agent or financial institution to see if they offer cyber liability or identity protection coverage or an identity theft damage control program. You might already be enrolled and you don't even know. Be very, very careful if you choose to have a voice-controlled assistant device like Alexa or Echo in your home or Siri on your phone. They're always listening and they have the ability to upload anything you say to the internet. If that device is on an unsecured home network, you really never know who could be listening to your private confidential conversations. Many of them also have cameras with a functionality called quote unquote drop in, which Amazon says is for parents checking on their babies and allow certain callers to turn on your camera and view whatever you are doing without accepting the call. That's kind of frightening. So clearly I don't use any of those devices. I don't know what I would do if I wasn't dealing with my and other people's confidential information all day, but it's just not a technology I'm comfortable having near me at this point. Computers and Wi-Fi. Okay, using a free Wi-Fi network without confirming its security is like handing over everything you search or do on your computer while you're on it. I tether my laptop to my mobile device, which has a personal hotspot that's protected by a complex password. Whenever possible, just don't use public Wi-Fi. The worst case scenario is that you log into your bank or email. Maybe you forget to log out of a public computer and you walk away from the machine, leaving your information totally exposed for every criminal walking by. I have definitely sat down at a computer in the library or maybe a shared computer in a workplace and found that it was still logged into someone's Gmail account. You know, I logged out for them. They are thanking me and they don't know they're thanking me. They don't even know me, but I you know, had access to every email they've written for months, if not years, right? So you never know what a bad actor could do with that. If you have to use somebody else's computer, make sure you log out and preferably clear the cache by going to the internet browser's history and deleting everything. And then before you dispose of your computer, make sure you wipe it of all personal information. Use a wipe utility program overwrite the entire hard drive or just restore it to factory defaults. I myself would just walk into the Apple store to have them do that because that's not really my zone of genius. Uh, remove the SIM card from any mobile device you dispose of. You may need to call or visit the repair center to know how to do this because it is different for every device. Hey, Profit Boss, if after listening to today's episode, you think you might be ready to take meaningful actions with your wealth and perhaps consider working with me and my firm in some way, then I'd love to hear from you. Just go to hillaryhendershot.com forward slash hello. That's Hillary with one L and Hendershot with two T's dot com slash hello. When I'm not sitting behind the mic, I'm running Hendershot Wealth Management. We're a fee-only fiduciary financial advisory firm. We work with women and couples to take their finances to the next level. Everything I talk about here on the show gets personalized and put to work for my clients. So I ask you, why wait till tomorrow when you can start realizing your full wealth potential today? The life you want to live, it doesn't have to wait. Just imagine the freedom and joy you'll experience when you've secured your retirement and enjoyed the years leading up to it. That's what I want for you. That's what I do for my clients. And if that's what you want for yourself, just head on over to my website right now, hillaryhendershot.com slash hello. All of our initial conversations are totally complimentary. So let's just see where a friendly conversation may lead. hillaryhendershot.com slash hello. Let's talk about social media. Occasionally, crooks will create interesting apps, quizzes, or surveys that ask for information you may have used to verify your ID somewhere else. At worst, you could lose your identity. At best, most of these quizzes get access to your entire friends list on social media sites at the outset. Avoid them. Just don't do them. Never ever announce to the world that you are on vacation and have left your home unprotected and unmanned. Save your pictures for posting them once you're home and avoid letting people know when you are most unprotected. 
I remember when we went on vacation while my house was being remodeled and I was so excited because for the first time I can remember I was able to post pictures live from my vacation because there were workers at my house. <laughs> we were li like living, were we living in the apartment? I can't remember. But anyway, it was the first time I, and I don't think I'll see another time like that in my near term future. If I go on a trip, I save up my pictures and I post them when I get home. Let's talk about credit and credit cards. First, only carry what you need when you go out. Consider having a backup credit card and or debit card should you experience fraud so you'll have to um, so you can access cash while you wait for replacements. Review your credit reports regularly. Most sites recommend once a year, but really that's only because the credit reporting agencies are required to give you free copies of your reports every year. So you could use a continual monitoring service such as Credit Karma. I do know a few people who use Credit Karma and they were notified during security breaches that uh, parts of their some of their data had been exposed. And so I think I think Credit Karma is reliable. And so I'm that's why I'm mentioning it here. They obviously haven't compensated me for that. There are lots of sites that offer to check your score for free, but often they only provide the credit report from one of the three credit reporting agencies. So the thing you need to know is that it's possible something's going on on one of your other credit reports if you're not checking all three. Consider freezing your credit. Adam Levin, the author of Swiped and the gentleman I interviewed last week, recommended it strongly. <sighs> Freezing credit makes it harder, if not impossible, for fraudsters to use stolen information about you to open new credit accounts. And freezing your credit does not block access by insurance companies, employers, and landlords to check your credit. As a financial advisor to high net worth individuals, I do have a slightly different viewpoint on freezing credit. I work with clients on a daily basis who need access to cash. They need to, they're, they need their money. So I can't in good conscience recommend credit freezing to everyone because waiting for your credit to thaw would be a really big problem for some. So if you would like to request a freeze on your credit, contact the three major consumer reporting agencies, and we've listed them in the PDF download, the cybersecurity download that you're going to download after the cybersecurity guide that you're going to download after you listen to today's episode. Now let's talk about your bag your purse, your briefcase, that little beautiful thing that carries everything someone would need to steal you, to become you. First of all, lock your wallet up at work, limit what you carry, do not carry your social security card, make a copy of your Medicare card and black out all but the last four digits on the copy so you only need the original when you go to the doctor's office. Consider using a crossbody bag so that thieves cannot take your purse or wallet out of your hand as you walk down the street. Don't put your wallet or credit cards down on the table at a restaurant. Thieves have devised creative strategies to distract you and grab your items. Keep that bag safe. I have a little subsection on the dark web. Don't trust identity theft services that offer to remove your personal information, such as account numbers or social security numbers from the dark web web. The dark web is populated by criminals and criminals are not interested in charging a low price to protect you from criminals when they can be the criminal who gets a high price for victimizing you. Okay. So use your intuition, think rationally, don't just, you cannot pay to have your data scraped or filtered from the interwebs. It just doesn't happen, so don't become victim to that kind of fraud. Let's talk about what to do when somebody dies. According to the Identity Theft Resource Center, as many as 2.5 million deceased individuals become the victims of identity fraud each year. Ghosting, as this form of fraud is also called, can take months for financial institutions to discover and remedy if the heirs or loved ones of the deceased are not proactive. Here's what to do. Get at least 12 copies of the official death certificate. Most financial institutions require originals. I can validate that, verify that. If there's a surviving spouse or other joint account holders, make sure to immediately notify relevant credit card companies, banks, stockbrokers, loan and lien holders, and the mortgage companies of the death. You want to let everybody who's do doing business with that person know that they're no longer on this earth. The executor of the estate will need to calculate the total amount of existing debt and be prepared to 
paid off before distributing any assets. So accounts need to be transferred to another living person or closed. And if you close the account, ask the financial institution to list the account as closed. Account holder is deceased so that nobody else can sort of pick the baton up and run with it. Contact all credit rating agencies, credit issuers, collection agencies, and any other financial institutions that need to know about the death and initiate the appropriate procedures for each one. Okay, so that's the checklist. Again, download it at hillaryhendershot.com forward slash 146. Let's wrap up here with the conclusion. Levin's third step, which is to manage the damage. Look, between Target, Equifax, and the, uh, the government's own Office of Personnel Management, and most recently Capital One, it seems that even those financial institutions, organizations, and companies legally obligated to keep data safe have been breached. And everybody's information is just out there. But the thing is, you haven't become a victim until someone applies for credit in your name, takes action falsely pretending to be you, or makes charges on one of your accounts. So you need a plan. Keep a list of companies. Keep the credit card numbers and associated customer service telephone numbers, bank accounts, and other institutions you do business with in a cloud account or on a Google Doc or in a tool like Evernote that can be accessed from anywhere. If you become a victim, you'll need a good reference sheet to use. Keep detailed notes on the issues you're trying to resolve, including the names of any customer service people you spoke with, the dates of the conversation and follow-ups promised, and make sure to follow it through to the end. Your issue has to get resolved and you're the person most interested in resolving it. Most research says that very few identity theft victims actually have out-of-pocket expenses. So that's really great. That's good news. However, my experience is when people do become victims, they come become victims at really high price ticket dollar amounts. That was a lot of words, kind of redundant. Let me give you an example. One popular scheme or scam I know about just because of my viewpoint into the world is that fraudsters will get into the email account of your escrow officer. And on the day you close on a house, you need to go wire money from your bank to the escrow company. And either you or your financial advisor will get an email supposedly from the escrow officer that says change in wiring instructions and you're already in a rush. It's a stressful transaction. So you just print that out and you go down to the financial institution and you give them unknowingly fraudulent wire information. So now you've wired money from your bank to a criminal's account. And it wasn't the escrow officer that sent that email but they got into his or her email address and wrote to you from there. So you assumed that that identity was confirmed, but it wasn't. So I know someone who's lost six figures this way. So, so it's a big deal and you do need to stay protected. Be wary and be aware when you're in a risky, potentially risky situation. Uh, wiring money from one account to, from your account to someone else's account is a very risky situation. So be very clear. Make sure you get a voice confirmation of those wire instructions. So even though most people don't have out-of-pocket expenses from these kinds of crimes, certainly to resolve someone having stolen your or your child's financial identity can cost you many, many hours to resolve. So stay on top of it. Be diligent. For the most part, these organizations have systems and procedures set up to support you. You just have to be in communication. The best strategy is to keep yourself from becoming a victim. So please, please, please go get yourself a password vault. Make sure all of your passwords are complex passwords. Practice device level security and make sure you're monitoring your accounts on a daily basis. My cybersecurity guide, especially for profit bosses, can be downloaded at hillaryhendershot.com forward slash 146. Thanks for listening. As we wrap things up here for today, I need to review with you the things I have to disclose as a fiduciary financial advisor offering wealth management services through my firm, Hendershot Wealth Management, LLC. You should know that the opinions I express on Profit Boss Radio are my own and they can change. The content I provide in the show is for general education. It's not intended as specific investment advice, nor do I recommend any specific financial products. Unlike how I roll at home with my husband, I can't guarantee that my statements, opinions, or forecasts are always 100% right. Of course, I wish I could peek into that proverbial crystal ball, but so far, I haven't found it. Past performance is not indicative of future results. 
I talk a lot about indexes and I want you to know you can't actually buy an index because of course, when you take a list of companies and create a product that allows people to invest in those companies, there are fees and expenses involved that reduce returns. Remember, all investing involves risk, which as you know, means you could lose your money. And I have to tell you that there is no guarantee that any investment plan or strategy will be successful. And that should keep my lawyers happy. Have a great day.